could be wrong. I've done a lot of these in the last few days, so it's kind of blurred, the numbers blurred, but my guess is one of a kind and awesome. This is Adrian Dittrich. Hello. He, hello, he is. I, I make sure if I make, correct me if I'm wrong. So I, you do OSTs, you do videos, you make video yep. games, you, you're a developer, and you're doing all kinds of cool stuff from across the pond. So how you been, man? Yeah, great, great. Trying to survive this uh, lockdown thing. But, uh, other than the way, it's fine. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's weird. So, I almost want to ask, and I almost don't, because I don't think anybody really wants to talk about COVID anymore. But yeah, yeah no, I think no one's saying. But I am going to ask this. So, what's it like in France? Like in terms of like, it's fine. You- like it's mostly that everyone's pretending that. Uh, uh like uh, that we're free again but there's like curfew and everything so it's just like you're allowed to go to work and uh, get infected at work if you want to but you're not allowed to have like parties or whatever so so you, so you can or well basically you can do the yeah yeah you thing. can do whatever yeah, or, yeah you can do that yeah i know they'll get better soon i think i i think well see i think personally the lockdown stuff this year one way or the other it doesn't really matter i think everybody's tired of it and i think everybody's like okay you know what fuck it like that's that's kind of where we're at good better and different that's kind of where i feel it's going i mean lockdown was kind of good for me because i got to make lots of games which i probably wouldn't have done if uh, if instead oh, yeah. i were outside with friends you know but uh, I, so instead i, I made games <laughs> yeah I, I i quit my job and and decided to freelance i published books and my podcast is now a talk show so i can't really i, I can't say i haven't been productive Mm. But life's nice. I, I like life. Life's yeah. good, yeah, you know. Life that's better, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's our COVID talk. Are you good with that being yeah, our COVID I'm, talk? I'm good. I'm good. That's fine. Yeah. 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 Let's get into you because you, so, okay, you do, obviously, you do YouTube stuff as well. So what came first, the video or the video games? The games. Also, like you say, I do YouTube stuff, but it's more like a, a side content. Okay, like, no, fair uh, enough. Fair enough. Because whenever I make a game, uh, I usually uh, also publish a full playthrough on YouTube just in case, you know, people get stuck in the game. So they can just refer to the playthrough and, uh, you know, uh, get unstuck. And also I found that because I used to put all my music on SoundCloud, but it's getting bad. So instead, I'm just uploading them straight to YouTube now as uh, individual files. Oh, that's that's um that's actually really cool that's a cool i never like that's an interesting thing but when you do so i'm going to ask this the last video question we'll get into your game <laughs> stuff. but it is just from a marketing standpoint this is how i'm thinking about this are you like introducing yourself and like doing like a play guide of some of the stuff you've done like do you do any of that stuff or do you talk about stuff you really like about when you design some of the stuff in your games? Or I do a bit of both. I do have a few uh, get like uh, how, how do you call it like dev talk videos, but uh, like really th- those are things that nobody really watches. Uh, mostly, it's uh, sometimes I have this um, those short projects where I take one hour to make a game, and so when I do that, I try to record myself so that uh, people can see I actually made it in one hour. I usually just rant during the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's but my, my youtube content is not really good f- for now at least <laughs> yeah no, no it's, it's fair no i i mean it sounds to me like you're very game like you're very game focused yeah so yeah. what was the game for you that made you say i wanted to do this i gotta ask that you mean like uh like a game i played yeah well we all like we're all like everybody that does like art stuff right any kind of art mm-hmm. whether it's video games whether it's writing whether it's like we all read see or, or interact with something that makes go this is amazing i don't want to do anything else like like this is what i want to do what was that for you oh, God, i can't remember i think there's something like around six or seven years old i used to just uh, draw like platform levels so i guess uh, like on a sort of uh, uh notebook so i guess that mario was a uh, good no, mario. Uh, like, yeah, I guess Mario was an inspiration. Uh, yeah. Also, Pokemon is probably like the most influential game for me, but that's the same for most people. Uh, but over time, I uh, just slowly uh, added more like games to my inspirations. Like, I have so many now. Usually, I just uh, steal shamelessly from uh, various games I've played. <laughs> mm. but, hey, hey, listen, we're, we're all. All artists are thieves. We just have yeah. how good we are doing. And that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is how it works. So, 
what's your genre like like do you like there's there a specific kind of game you like designing or is it like are you just trying different stuff right now so you i usually try different stuff but mostly i i like uh systemic design so like i like the kind of games where even i as a developer can't really predict uh everything that will happen uh, I like it when I just uh, design very simple, simple systems, which when they all interact together, they become something complex. Uh, usually, like roguelikes are that, like a type of game that I really like. But also, like Pokemon is also this kind of game because there are so many different components to it, and uh, there are definitely things in Pokemon that the developers didn't intend happening, but they happen anyway, and they're like. Uh, speedrun strats now um oh, yeah. but yeah I, yeah I, li I like this kind of game i like uh, the kind of game where there are many many different systems which interact together so my video game choices are rpgs i love the rpg mm -hmm. concept and system so for me like something like 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 where like unintended consequences of okay, a game like final fantasy 7 the original not the remake right mm -hmm. the period system was ingenious but it was so busted when you got to the end, end, end part of the game because it just it tended to it, it tended to make um there were a lot of unintended cut like yeah. like stuff but that's not like that's the cool thing about games too is when gamers have their own gamers have their own sense of logic and mm -hmm. their own sense of um figuring things out and discovery is a big part of games. And I, yeah. I find that when you find things that weren't intended or things that were like, there are things- you Exploits. Said, yeah, exploits, but also, so there's both. Like there's the, there's stuff you, like when you play, when you build your games, you want your players to discover stuff. There's things you want them to discover because yeah. that's a cool thing and you want them to figure out certain combinations to make things really effective. But then there's like the second level of that, it's like, well, this and this create this unintended consequence. Like, oh, shit, mm. all right, all right, and you like that to some degree. You don't want it. Yeah. You don't want your games too easy, but you also don't want. But but you want. But there's a that's a tricky balance. You want you want people to have that realm, but you don't want it to be so big that you just completely wreck the wreck the design you you build. So, yeah. have you done anything like like have you accidentally done anything like that yet, or, or is it been just really <laughs> simplistic so far? I mean, yeah, I've I've made like a few games like that. Uh, mostly like on the whole, uh, uh, getting the players to test things and see what works. Uh, there's one of my recent games called uh, Universal Thief, uh, which is a game where you can uh, steal anything. Uh, oh. And in the in that game, like the main mechanic is that you can steal enemy moves to build yourself the most overpowered move set possible. Um, and uh, there, there are some really strong combinations. And there's actually uh, I, f I forgot his nickname, but a guy who speed ran my game uh, and like can finish it in something like 12 minutes uh, by just getting the most broken combinations, and it's it's amazing. Ah, so you, you like, yeah, that. like you were, you were like, this is a, this is awesome. I kind of want to. Yeah, do that. like he he discovered techniques that I hadn't, like basically bugs. Uh, like so, for instance, there's this move in the game called Boost, where w whenever you use it, it will double the strength of your n next attack. But you will, you can use it multiple times in a row. For instance, if you use it five times, uh, then your next attack will be will deal thirty two times the damage it's supposed to. Uh, and uh, there's actually a glitch in the game, which is that if you end a fight and haven't used your boost, uh, it's still active, which means that you can one-shot the final boss like this, which has something like a like a billion HP or something. You can you can just one-shot the boss like that. Oh jeez, so it's uh, it's an accidental exploit, but it's like it's a good like. So I mean, debugging is a huge thing, and that must be a challenge mm -hmm. as an independent. They're like, hey, can you play my game so I can figure out like what I missed? Is yeah, it's like a challenge. Yeah, well, usually what I do is I ask my Discord server when uh, like the game is out, and they just play test it when the game is out, and then I just add like a a one point one version later, which uh, fixes the the things that most people discovered. But uh, yeah, I also do most of the bug testing myself. So um, what happens usually? What I also like doing is. Uh, team projects usually two person collabs so i'll be working usually with an artist or sometimes another developer uh and uh, we just uh like uh, play test each other's parts uh also i'd like uh 
to uh, give a shout out to uh, Edward Atkin if he's watching live. We've made a game together, which is, is probably one of the best projects I've ever took part in. The idea is that you make a level for a game, then you send the game file to the other developer who adds something, and then he sends it back to you and you just alternate like this, adding stuff to the game. It was just amazing. We made such a broken game. I love it. <laughs> yeah. If you ever want to try it, it's called Tennis Tower. Tennis so, Tower? Uh, yeah, Tennis you Tower. Know, it's you know, a game about tennis. Do, what you need to do, man, when this is over, you got to send me all the links to all of where you find all your cool games. And yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send you that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, sounds like, that sounds like fun, man. That sounds like a lot of fun. I, uh, so, yeah, so you, so you like simple systems. So mm. because, of, because of Pokemon, because of the games like Pokemon and stuff. So what's more important to you, story or playability? I do realize they tie together, but... I'd okay. say the most important part for me would be to, like, it's not really game or story, but it would be to avoid uh, loot or narrative dissonance. Yeah, I'm, I'm using those those words now. Uh, the idea that uh, I like it, I, I like, like, I like simple stories and complex stories. Or I like any kind of story. What I don't like is when the the story uh, makes the gameplay irrelevant or the other way around. For instance, uh, I really don't like this trope where, uh, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. There are some games where I, lots of games actually where I do that. But I don't like this trope where um, you complete a gameplay segment, you just beat someone up, and then in the next cut cutscene, the person you just beat up like stands up and it beats you up and you can't do anything about it because it's a cutscene. This is just the one kind, it's, it's the kind of thing I don't like. And so uh, I really also don't like uh, games which have a feel like, you know, very profound philosophical messages in their cutscene which don't translate to gameplay. Like there, there are many, many recent AAA games which are guilty of this. Like they give you like this amazing story about grief and loss, and uh, there's uh, like you know lots of uh, interpersonal drama, but the gameplay is shooting people. Yeah, which doesn't. Well, it's because I, I, there's a concept called top-down design, mm. and it's and I, I've seen it in like board games and card games and stuff like that. I, I for whatever reason, video games don't always do this, and that is. Your story dictates your mechanics. Yeah. And when it's done really well, it's an amazing feeling. Um, I'm going to use a card game example of this. One of my favorite card games of all time is Magic. My favorite, one of my favorite sets is the original Zendikar set. Uh, the whole thing was land matters. They made a mechanic called landfall. So whenever you play the land, something happens. It's an intuitive gameplay mechanic yeah. that applies into the story of the game at that point in time. It's a brilliant little system. And it works wonderfully, mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Like I, I look at like there are some games where it's like, um, or, or a good video game example where I think the mechanics work really well is Dishonored. Dishonored mm -hmm. has this assassin, and the game is a sneak game. You're sneaking around, yeah. and you can choose whether you can kill or you don't kill. But you, you, again, you're an assassin, and so your the gameplay works. Like if you try to pay people on straight up, right, it doesn't work. Yeah, right? it doesn't work at all. You, you get your butt kicked, but if you sneak very again, you're sneaking and yeah. stealthing, the game works. So yeah, but also like something about Dishonored that I never really liked is that uh, like usually the peaceful options, the options where you don't kill people, uh, they don't really like. They're going to be options, for instance, where you you send someone and just like somewhere else and ruin their life or something. And um, so there are some of those scenarios where you, like. I think death would be better for the person involved. I don't know. It's just uh, that's, it that's, also, that's that's one of the cool parts about that game. I like writers. Yeah, you're making decisions that have long term repercussions. One of my favorite mm. scenes is when the guy is trying to poison the guy you're trying to save. Well, you have a couple options. You can switch the drink. You can eliminate the drinks altogether. You yeah. can you can choose to just wait until the guy shows up and then just kill him from behind. Like you have options. I mean, yeah, you have options, but they basically all result in your target not being there anymore. Like yeah. they, they basically all of the your options result in removing uh, the the like the the element, removing the person, either by killing them or by sending them somewhere else, or you know just they're not there anymore. Yeah. Which is like, a, it's something that uh, feels a bit weird to me sometimes. Ah. How would mm. you fix it? Like how would I you... probably, there's a, that's the thing, I probably wouldn't be able to fix it. I would just design a completely different game 
like uh, yeah, like yeah. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a stealth game anymore. It would be basically a game about seeing the results of your con uh, like the consequences of your actions later. But uh, honestly, I don't feel like Dishonored is the kind of game where you really see the consequences of your actions because I mean, they, they, there's basically from what I remember, maybe I'm wrong about this, but from what I remember, there's like one ending. Uh, where you kill like absolutely no one, uh, and then there's another ending where you killed a bunch of people, and which is basically the same as the ending where you kills everyone. I don't know. I don't really remember how the system works, but it doesn't feel like consequences to me. It plays like it feels like taking the red option or the blue option in uh, something like uh, what's this game where you have superpowers uh, uh, when you're. What, 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 say again? One of the major, one of the major games was like that, if I'm not mistaken. Not not the original one, but the one where you actually kneel. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking the wrong game. No, no, no. Uh, the one where you're uh, like you're a, just a guy in a city flying around like with superpowers. I forgot the name. I played it recently. Where you can uh, usually you can either stun people or uh, kill them directly. You usually have like a blue option and a red option. Uh, I, I forgot the name. I'll uh, I'll recall yeah. it later. Well, uh, our um, infamous, I think it's called. Okay, infamous. Okay, okay. Yeah. The constant layer consequence game. Oh, it depends. It depends. Like I, I, consequences are really tricky. Some of them are really fun. Like I look at a game like Chrono Trigger, where some of the consequences. Yeah, aren't th this hard. this is this was one that does consequences really well because there's basically thirty different endings depending on what you choose. This this is one that does it well. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, and, and actually, it's one that it, and it and and some of them are. Incredible incredibly difficult to get to like that's, that's the other thing too it's like uh like the the uh first option although the the first option to end the game you don't get until new game plus but it's like it's literally right at the beginning of the game it's like you can go right to the boss right now if you yeah yeah <laughs> uh, no, my favorite cool. my favorite ending i got i'm not gonna lie is right before you go back in time to the very beginning of time so everybody's loads of people by the time you all come back it's a hilarious ending and i enjoyed it um but no, it, it like Chrono Trigger was a very smart, intuitive yeah. game. I think where... I really liked that. One of the scenes that which blew my mind was like the the trial scene, especially when I played it for the second time. And I I realized that you know on my second playthrough, I basically sped a few things up. I didn't talk to like many different NPCs. And uh, in that trial scene, uh, the charges against me were completely different from my first playthrough. And uh, like. I think like the, the like the execution didn't happen the same way or something, and it, it's really like uh, that kind of game moment where I thought, oh wow, they really put some thought oh, into this. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> uh, and not, no, that 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 game's amazing. Like, I I mm. think it's 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 still a gem, yeah. it's a gem that people do not realize that um, it's an old game, but it's a good game. Another it's one really I really like yeah. in that era that doesn't get a lot of love. Well, it gets a lot of love, although it's incredibly hard to get a copy of now. It's Earthbound. Yeah, I mean you have like emulators or is it, is it illegal to talk about emulators oh, yeah, well, <laughs> i'm gonna you know what we got you can that's pretty much it i'll be right okay. back i'm just gonna there, there's just something going off and i just want to deal with it sorry okay. everybody who's watching this i'll be right back Yeah, emulators are good. Use emulators. They're good for uh, cultural conservation, I guess. There we go. There we go. That's my, my, my phone decided to have all these wonderful like sounds and thingies going off. So I'm like, I'm <laughs> really? all the sound. It's like, it's like, sense. yeah, it's like, I'm taking that off because that just sucks. Mm. But no, like, it's like, it's, I, I, I look at game design has in one sense it's interesting because game design is kind of niched out quite a bit now um triple a games have a very specific formula that they use it's very different than what it used to be mm. and what's happened is i think is a lot of independent gamers are taking advantage of the fact what the original idea of games are is that they're generally complete games all on their own i look at like a, like one of my favorite ones from vox I, I see from vox is into a dream that's a great game right and that, and that's a um but it's a complete game, start to finish. There's mm. no downloaded content. There's no. Yeah. You get an extra experience playing a certain way. No, no, that's not what this is. This is a. You get a complete game. It has a 
a unique experience. And I'm sure your games are the same thing. You have a great mm -hmm. game. You have a unique experience. People enjoy it. People don't. You beat it. You don't. It's over. And then you're done. Yeah. And then you're done. Whereas if you get a game from a AAA, a lot of AAA games have, okay, there's the regular game. Then there's the download content game. Then mm -hmm. there's this, that, and the other thing. And, and you're looking at that and you're going, okay. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they usually, as one of the other thing I don't like about AAA games is this, they usually sell playtime to you. Like yeah. uh, they're going to say, oh, this game is a uh, hundred hours of gameplay. Uh, and then you realize that most of this gameplay is just like the six same missions, like strung after the other with different cutscenes. Uh, and it's something like, uh, well, triple what triple games usually do systemic games well. Uh, for instance, I think Red Dead Redemption, uh, the both of them are really good. Uh, but uh, there are other games where, like for instance, the Assassin's Creed series, where they have like this huge world with uh, tons of characters, usually very, you know, with very accurately represented characters, uh, with uh, like a, a very accurate weaponry system, and you have only six things you can do. Like you can kill people, tail people, uh, sneak on, uh, to people, and like the, you just have the, the same missions all over again, but with a different context every time. And it's something I kind I don't really like. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Assassin's Creed series, <laughs> really. You gotta give them credit because it's a formula that works. Like, you, like yeah, that, they know that, that works, but that like they make enormous games which are boring to play. Uh, well, for you, for you, for absolutely. me, yeah, for me, for yeah, you, yeah, yeah for, for for you. I some I'm, again when you make how many games do they make? Six. They made yeah. many more actually. Like how many? Wait, how many Assassin's Creed games are here? Assassin's Creed games are there. Uh. Apparently twelve. They made twelve. Dear games. God, twelve! Holy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so I I knew a five that were decent, like very yeah. high, right? There, but here's what happens, right? You look at every if you strictly on a business level, we're not talking creative. Strictly on a business level, mm -hmm. what you're hoping for is you want the equivalent of a fast food game, and what I mean by that is. A game that's not necessarily the best game or the worst game, but appeals to a broad enough audience mm. where you can make your masterpieces, right? But you have a formula that people are buying all the time. That's what that's yeah, yeah. That's what it's that. Like, if you look at it strictly on a business level, it's a brilliant game. You, yeah, you, yeah, you have a template that essentially works. It's a cool concept. Um, you can do a lot of different things with that concept. That's really fun. My personal favorite of the of them all is the pirate one because that was yeah. Cool. Actually, that's the one I tolerate the most. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pirate one's more black flag. Black flag. Yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> a, reminds it's me a, of Wind Waker sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a really really fun game. Um, of the of the Assassin's Creed, it's my favorite. It's the one that actually took a good very. It was a good variation on the theme. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree. Right, um, but. Like you're you do you're hoping to do one of two things. You're hoping to either do come up with a formula that people will constantly buy over and over and over again. I mean, yeah. there are twelve games, which means that someone bought this at least eleven times. Yeah, right? yeah. That's, that, that's, <laughs> that's how you gotta look at that, right? Um, Makes sense. right? So there's that. Flip side. Um, the other option is the what I call the icon option, which is okay, you have Mario Brothers, you have Mario Party, mm -hmm. you have Mario Kart, you have I think one of the most brilliant things video games do, like I look at the Persona series, it's another series that does the same thing. They'll take mm -hmm. these characters that have that people connect to and have a great uh, have a great rapport with, and they'll put them in just these different games. They may not make any like tangibly are completely different games, but it's that what they're selling there is those characters, those feelings, yeah. that 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 fun. Mario Party is a fun game. Mario Kart is a fun game, and. But and they're smart. Nintendo's smart enough to go like, okay, Mario can fit anywhere we want him to be. Heck, he was yeah. the referee in the original Punch Out too. I mean, it it anything, yeah. yeah, right. But that's brilliant too because you're 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 creating a property that people recognize yeah. worldwide. It's brilliant. And I think that I think and I really admire how um, I really admire how Japanese at like this is Japanese businessman and you know, I'm not. Like in terms of video games, like this is a really smart way to do it. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Mouse did the same thing with Disney as Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse goes everywhere, mm -hmm. right? He's, you see him everywhere. It, it's smart marketing. Um, 
So like strictly on a business level, that's the other way to go. So, I mean, what would you prefer? The fast food formulaic? I find my formula, it works. I make lots, lots of the same game. I'm sure there are days you drink, but I mean, I make this game, it makes me money. Or you find characters that people really connect with and you can put them in a variety of platforms. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this, it just feels like a fake choice to me. Like, it feels yeah. like you're presenting two options, which are the only ones that were taken by the game industry. And, like, I, w- I wouldn't, like, yeah, no, that's not what you want to I do. wouldn't do one of those. No, that's not what I want to do. What, wait, <laughs> oh, so, what, so, okay, for you, I mean, you obviously enjoy the creative aspect of building, in, building games. Mm. But, and obviously, you, you want to keep doing this for as long as you want to keep doing this. So, what, like, yeah. what's your angle? I mean, my angle on this is big. It's just because I kind of have like a, a cursed brain. I can't focus on the same project uh, like too long. So I just like may, making many different games with uh, various characters and never reuse anything ever. Uh, so that's kind of not very good for brand appeal, I guess. Like I don't have a very good brand on this because uh, like none of my games look the same. Uh, but it's it's the way I like making things, and I don't really make them to be sold i just want people to play them and enjoy them like you know but maybe yeah. basically would kind of be like um like a fast food kind of game except i have like many different fast food chains i, I guess i I, like, I i actually used to have like an ice cream player an ice cream shop you yeah know? something like that yeah, yeah i'm yeah. an ice cream seller and i have like all those different uh, ice cream flavors and uh they're like come in really small packages and uh, you enjoy them once and sometimes you ask for a new flavor sometimes yeah. you go to the <laughs> next store which is uh selling all those blockbusters but yeah so, so writing wise there's this author named Ailey martinez he never writes a sequel. He never does a, mm. the same story ever again. He always does different stories. It's not like, like honestly, that that's not a bad way to go. It's it's creatively more challenging, but mm. it sounds to me like that's what you want to do. And you, you I mean, oh yeah, because the thing you say it's creatively more challenging, but I wouldn't be able to do the other like i think that the longest games i've worked uh it's a game called nintendo nightmare it's a sort of nintendo crossover also i got dmc8 a few times for it uh which took me two years to make and the only reason i managed to continue working on this project is because every time i had a new gameplay idea or a new you know any new idea i just put it in the same game instead of making a new game so it it ends up being this broken mess full of different ideas all str- strung together. And it works well because it's a parody game, but uh, I can't apply the same method to a like to a more serious game. So I would I would just not be able to make like a like a really long uh, series of games which all have the same characters. I, that's not how I work. So okay, so and I've uh, tried multiple. No, times. no, no, no. I, I'm not. I, 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 dude, dude, you got to be true to who you are. Like mm. bottom line, you have to be true, true to who you are. That like, if you are the guy, you just want to be as creative as possible, make games that people yeah. want to play. Yeah, exactly. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. Um, like I said, I, I, like I said, what I've talked about is generally what a lot of businesses do. Yeah, what that's businesses right? do. Yeah, yeah, right, I, right. That's the thing. I'm not a business. I don't even sell my games. They're all like mostly free. So yeah. yeah. Well, which, by the way, again, if that's what you want to do, mm. well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. But I will ask this then. But would so you like making simpler games? Are you working on? Because as you said something earlier that caught my eye, which was you like making you like making simple systems that over time become more complex. Yeah. So, how many games have you done? I should ask oh, that. I asked this question. Wait, let me let, let me check my itch. Not all my games are there, but you only my released games. So. How much is this? 22 times 3. I have 66 games on my itch IO right now. Uh, and uh, So yeah, that's a lot. And those are only the games I actually finished. Because uh, I also have oh, many sure. more games uh, which are like we're just prototypes. And there's maybe hundreds of them which I never... Which I just started making something and then stopped after a week. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that one later. I was going to ask <laughs> this. I was I was going to ask this because um, you were talking about making simple systems ultimately becoming more complex pieces. Are your games becoming more complex as you like you made? Obviously, um, game designer one versus game number sixty six. I, mean, I imagine like you. I hope anyway 
you, you at least you know more about what not to do and, yeah. and whatever games and but this this can be a problem sometimes because i know the things that don't work uh and uh, this usually means that uh, i'm not going to be able to do things that won't work for instance i'm kind of bad at uh, so, so you see so so i'm i like uh systemic games with lots of elements which all interact with one another and i'm kind of bad at one off set pieces like uh, uh like the kind of for instance i'm really bad at cutscenes because uh cutscenes are always the same there's no interaction between elements in a cutscene it's just uh things that happen one after the other in like in a set timeline uh those are things that i could do but they're not they're not fun uh, for me to make uh and it also means that for for instance i talked earlier about tennis tower so this is a, a game that so i made with uh, edward uh and he basically made like the best one off moments in the game uh which were moments which i were like i was completely unable to uh use what he made in other levels but they worked perfectly on their own and this is something i can't really do or like i can if i concentrate i guess doesn't it doesn't interest you does it yeah it doesn't really interest me uh and the problem is uh those things why i don't do this because i've noticed like after the years first of all it's not really fun for me and also that when i try usually it means i create content that can't really be reused later uh by other parts of the game so it's something that, like i naturally don't just don't do it uh what else you're all about the interactive process like yeah i'm all about the interactive process. yeah you're fascinated by that you're more interested in mm. in the fact that i want to see what, how, how people play with this idea and so actually so yeah well, what I was the point i want to give is so those things which i know are bad like game de- like game design in my mind uh i have like a, a game jam i host uh, called the game breakers toolkit jam about two or three times every year uh where the goal is to make the worst possible game okay so you just go there you have to make something playable but yeah, it has yeah. to be the worst possible game and this allows me to just do whatever like cuz i i just code from start to finish without ever stopping and uh i can do one off things i can i can add mechanics which make no sense it doesn't matter because it's supposed to be a bad game and this like it's a process i've been doing for a while now and uh uh like you you end up with really bad games but which are in my mind interesting i i love playing them because uh, usually we get like 20 to 30 different games uh, in that jam and uh, they they're just all great to me well also that that's where people can experiment more too because yeah because you, yeah. you, you're not worried about the result really yeah you're not worried about getting criticized or making a bad decisions all decisions are good like all the decisions you take in your game as long as they're not like because we we had a few issues like uh, for with someone for instance submitting like a completely racist game or something yeah that yeah, yeah, can well, happen. No, yeah, yeah, but yeah. apart apart from that uh apart from that then um, all your decisions will work because you're trying to make a bad game anyway <laughs> Well yeah, you're you're more interested you're again you're interested in the concept of uh figuring out interactions and this is where you yeah. get older. Like okay, listen, I don't know if this mechanic actually works. What would build a game around this mechanic? If it sucks, yeah. whatever. But if it's <laughs> I actually have this thing usually where I go on Twitter and ask people to give me shit game mechanics and uh then I pick the my favorite one and make a game out of it in like one hour. Nice. You know what actually I I yeah, what would be terribly bad is if you're playing a character and interacts and instead every so often he just vanishes from the screen. He doesn't die. He's just there <laughs> and the game just like keeps playing and you're like uh and then it comes back randomly. It's almost it, it's almost like an evil version of Ghouls and Ghosts because I yeah. that game was ridiculously hard because of all the just the random encounters. But that that would, that would be a terrible game. It would be like mm. the character would just randomly disappear. Come, like make him like the ADD guy. Well, see, that's a good thing. I'm writing this idea and I'm stealing it. Okay, go ahead. So. Back stuff up. Game with disappearing character. Yeah, yeah, but, but call him ADD guy. Basically, every so often, like like when he disappears, you have like a butterfly or something show up on the screen. And it's like, "Oh, a butterfly." And he just goes. He just disappears <laughs> completely. Then he comes back in the middle of the game while everything's still going on. You're like, "Uh, what just happened actually it could be i actually figured out oh my god just figured out a way to make this good 
I mean, oh. look, uh, I'll probably make this tomorrow because uh, that's how I work. Like, yeah, I have no, the idea. Cool. Here. Cool. I'm... So here, here's how that would be, you make that mm. work. You, you want to put like a really a, a, a unreal little bit of pressure on people. Set a time limit. Like, you know how Mario has a time limit to finish the level? Mm. All right. Set the time limit. And the time keeps going, no matter whether he disappears and that, you just make him disappear like on a random generator, right? So just like, it, it would be a very, very evil kind of Nintendo heart. It would just be yeah, yeah. evil. I, I, yeah, so, and if you make it, I, I definitely will play it. Like I will go yeah. and download it and I'll be like, I mean, I, this sounds like something I could make in about an hour or two. So I'll yeah, probably yeah. Just, so, I mean, uh, like, make that it, later. Yeah, <laughs> I just made it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. watching this, I just think it's a really <laughs> terrible game idea. Just really mm. terrible. That'd ADD be great. Man. Right. All right. Off to save the princess, except he always gets ADD, gets distracted along the way, and just disappears randomly. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and that would, yes. And, and and people will look at me and go, how would you come up? It's like, I just decided. It's, like, it's one yeah, of those just, things. That's how ideas work anyway. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's. That's it. Oh God, I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> You're taking part in the you, you in the cultural me, right? event uh, of game dev. Like you, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, you, you forgive me, right? It's I, yeah, I, yeah, all yeah. good. As long as you forgive me, it's all good. Everybody else is sorry, right. <laughs> right? But no, it's just like one of those things. Like like that. That would be a terrible game, but it would be it'd be like because it just would just frustrate people at the wrong times. God, yeah. Like, Right. Uh, one of my latest idea, which um, I think I'll be starting soon, but I don't know, is uh, have you played any Fire Emblem games? Yes. So basically, I want to make a Fire Emblem game with, you know, the like uh, full mechanics, you know, very deep character stats, uh, system, all that with growth levels, uh, except that you can complete every mission with the warp staff. Sure. All of them. Uh. That, that's one of my goals. <laughs> You oddly remind me. And you. obviously, this means that in the event where you would, like, I don't know, uh, if the boss is like uh, a melee unit and you just warp a mage uh, one space away from it, uh, then the boss will comment on the fact that a mage just warped next to him and is like shooting him from distance and he can't do anything because he's sitting on a throne or something. Terrible. See, now, now you remind me of, a, of a, like, my, my, one of my. When what I think is could have been a really good game, but was wrecked because of the way the mechanics were. Was Final Fantasy Twelve? I haven't played it actually. Oh, okay. So, actually, I have. I think I haven't played any of the three D Final Fantasy. Like I think I played seven, but that's about it. I haven't played any Final Fantasy after that. Okay, so here's what here was the problem with Twelve. Mm. Okay, Twelve actually has an incredibly cool side quest system. You have an incredible. You have incredible places to explore, some cool side quests, all that stuff. Here's the problem. The combat, you can make the combat completely on Mac. You can, yeah. like, completely. You don't actually have to play the game for it to actually play the game. It's, yeah. it, it was terrible for that. And it was like, so there was a point in the game, it's like, so now you don't have to use those mechanics, but mm. obviously, like, as you know, we are convenient people. Right. Yeah. So this works easier than anything I could do on my own. Yeah. So awkward. So it was a little too automatic. Um, yeah. And so it was like, but it could have been a good game. It was like that close. But that mm. one thing that interaction is so important. And the moment you take interaction away from the game, it just doesn't yeah, it just becomes a long cutscene. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And. I mean, with I grinding in between. <laughs> if, I, if I want to watch a movie, uh, I'll go watch a movie. I, mm. If I want to actually, you know, um, if I want to actually play a game, I, I, I want to play a game. That's just, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. How, that's how it works, right? So, 66 games. Tower Tennis sounds like one game you're really proud of. Mm. What's another one you're really proud of? Well, the one I'm the least proud of is Nintendo Nightmare, the the Nintendo crossover I talked about earlier, but it's probably one of my most known games anyway. Uh, basically, what I did is I combined uh, like the Mario 64 and uh, the Legend of Zelda Oc Ocarina of Time uh, and made it like a single game with lots and lots of different low-resolution characters and uh, very bad 3D models too. I think Vinesauce, uh, Vinesauce played it actually too, and uh, yeah, 
But it's kind Ooh. of a huge game. Uh, also, I got DMCA twice for it. Like now, I have it on itch under a different name with like uh, numbers, so that Nintendo doesn't find it. Uh, but yeah, it got. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's kind of made me cry, though, dude. You kind of made me cry because like, um, I like Ocarina of the Time. I think yeah. Mario and Mario sixty four is actually a pretty fun game. Mm. I wouldn't want them in the same engine. Yeah, well, I'll see, there's a thing. And also, uh, there's, there's something amazing about Nintendo Nightmare. There's actually a very small speedrunning community in this game. It actually got played at uh, uh, ESA uh, 2016, the European oh, cool. uh, Speedrunner Assembly. Uh, and uh, so Pula is the person who, uh, P-W-U-L-L-A, is the person who speedrun the game, and I think who still holds the, the, the world record. And there are a bunch of bugs in my game, which are exactly the same as Legend of Zelda bugs. For instance, uh, there's the fact that uh, the most optimal way to play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is just to go in a dungeon, grab the weapon, and get out without doing anything else. Because you don't actually need the medals, you don't actually need the 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 you know the you, you don't actually need to fight the boss to finish the game. You just need to take the weapons in each dungeon and then skip everything. And so that's basically also how my game is speed ran. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, yeah but that, that means... And also, the only reason why you play as Link is because in the middle of the game, Mario dies. And so when Mario dies, uh, like uh, there's a, like a time span of seven years and Link just randomly shows up because he's the hero of time. And now he has to fix every mistake that happened before oh my god <laughs> it sounds like a game i want i both want and dread it's uh currently on the mario fan games galaxy it got a good uh, reception so if you go there you should be able to to download it it's uh it takes about 10 hours to finish i think something like that so you you, you took a piece of it but yeah it's still it sounds it sounds oh yeah it's blasphemy i like it <laughs> no, 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 it's, not, it's, not, it's not, you're an ex- like you're an experimenter. That's who you. That's what you are. You're the kind of guy, <laughs> like you, like you just like you want to see how all the guts of how all this stuff works and yeah. And, and so uh, obviously you're making games a lot. Do you do you have time to play them at this point? Mm, yeah, that's the thing. I have time to play lots of indie games. I really like uh, going on itch and finding random indie games to play, or sometimes games my friend made because usually they're quite short. Um, also, uh, I think a few months ago there was a, a bundle uh, available called the Bundle for Racial Justice and Equality. For like five dollars, you could get a thousand games or something, which are all of like good quality for an indie game. And uh, I just play those like often. And um, uh, I, what I really don't have time for is AAA games. Like uh, there are some like usually when I want to research because I do I do a lot of that. I do a lot of uh, researching existing games to know what sis- what works, what doesn't, and what I can get from it. Usually I watch videos like gameplay videos for AAA game because first of all I'm not interested in spending my money in there. Like it's kind of a toxic industry. I'm not. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to support it. And also uh, because those are really long games that I just don't have the time to play them. So I just look at gameplay sequences. Sometimes I look at how the story works, and I just I just look full playthrough videos for that. Ah, okay. So for for me, like there are some AAA games that I still play, like but like they're, they're again I'm an RPG guy. So I find- I think there is one sort of AAA game I like to play still is uh, XCOM Two. Like that's yeah, I, uh, I, 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 one of the main I, ones. I literally just got it, so I'm gonna yeah, it's play. really good. <laughs> and also, I recommend uh, lots. There's lots of mods I could recommend for. Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it the original way first. I'll probably mod it mm. later, but I'm gonna play it the original way first. For me, you I, should I, play on. Uh, if if this is your first time playing this, you should play on easy mode, but Iron Man. Like uh, you should fi- take the mode where all your characters die whenever, like permanently, and all your decisions are permanent. That's the best way to play this game. Well, no, I, 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 I intend to. Like, those are the ways you like. I'm, I'm very much. Um, there was this one AAA game I can't remember what it was called. I got it for Christmas. It's at it's in a storage locker in Calgary, Alberta. I'm in Windsor, Ontario. So to give you, mm. it's almost the distance between you and me. Um, almost. So you're, 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 a little, you're a little, you're a little, you're a little farther. A bit further, further, yeah. A little bit farther. Not as far. Not that far. Though, that much that farther though. So yeah, Canada is a huge country. It's just yeah, like, yeah, I guess. Um. 
but um it's one of those things where um yeah the characters just died like there was a war game yeah so if your character i mean died, there's even during the tutorial uh your character dies anyway so yeah. like to just to, just to hammer in the fact that this is normal this is this is this is how it's supposed to work yeah and so i mean it, it's interesting like trying to do a i can save everybody thing is kind of suicidal because you almost never it happens. So it's almost impossible but there are some people I've, I've did it a few times but like it requires lots of uh like uh it basically requires exploiting the game yes <laughs> like uh for instance if you use uh, i prob- don't know if this counts as a spoiler or not uh but uh you can basically th- there's an item in the game which is a, a sort of decoy uh which you can use and enemies will just as soon as you get this decoy you're basically invincible because enemies will always target the decoy and never your actual troops it probably got patched uh, patched or uh, in a in a later update like this doesn't work in the well, no that's fine no, I, I think i think that uh i mean it, it's cool because it, it's again it's always neat to see how a game tries to work around the con like they give you they give always players an option sometimes things are too yeah. good so you make the decision that you know what I, i'm not i'm not gonna let you have that i'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah <laughs> no, it's, it's how it goes right it's totally how it goes mm. i um no, I'm looking forward to XCOM 2. Like I said, I'm going to be getting some more indie games kind of from here on in. I've got m- most of the games I still play that are triple A's are usually JRPG style games. I yeah. like them. That's just that's just that's just me. I find indie games indie games make great like short to medium games. The long indie game like that like an RPG, I they I'm sure they exist. Mm. I'm not cool enough to know what they are. Yet. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but that's that's me. But I, I I I'm enjoying the fact that people right now, like people like yourself, are experimenting with this. Basically, I still a very unmined platform, and mm. coming up with new ways of playing games, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, game. So you never told me what game are you most proud of making? Oh, let me check. <laughs> I'm proud of most of them, but like. Oh no, you're you're always proud of most of them, but I, I, I get I get the feeling that sometimes, much like in art, some of the thing ideas you have, some of them work out better than you possibly. Yeah, I, I guess that currently one of the ones I'm most proud of making is uh, called Universal Thief. It's the one where you can steal everything, because uh, it's uh, it's kind of a very complete game. There's uh, lots of stuff in there. Um, but uh, what else do I have? Because I've also made a few like visual novel style games, which are maybe not as interesting for some. Visual novel games. But yeah, if if there is one game I made, you should try. It's definitely Universal Thief. Okay, so Universal Thief and Tower of Tennis and mm-hmm. Nintendo Nightmare. If I want to hurt. Yeah, N- Nintendo yeah. Nightmare for when you hurt, uh, you hate yourself. Yeah, yeah that's, when I hate just, myself. Please play yeah, that. Just, okay, okay, I got gotcha, you. Gotcha. <laughs> No, we're just, but those, but those are things. So, for you, so you know, it's not your goal as a, like from the business end of things. Do you see yourself doing more and more game work, working for a game company? Is that what, like do you, do you want to go that direction, no. or just no? I, I probably like I might if uh, I might work on some st- projects with maybe Devolver or you know all those companies which uh, just fund indie games, uh, like companies. But I don't, I don't see myself working in the video game industry like uh, at all. Like it's just not, not, not in the foreseeable future. Not until the working conditions change. No, I, 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 I don't want to be like. Uh, first of all, I like having like many different parts. Like I like making the music, I like drawing the art, I like coding, I like writing. I like making everything there is to do about a game. Uh, and uh, the video games industry wouldn't provide me with this. Because, uh, like, if you work in a, for instance, working at Ubisoft or whatever, you're just a cog in the machine, and you have like a few specific tasks you have to do. It's it's just not how I like to make my games. You you you, you are definitely a creative person that likes like likes trying different things. You know, there are yeah. some things you like more than others. You, mm-hmm. you you're right. You, 
you you just enjoy making stuff. That's yeah, I just enjoy making stuff, and like uh, I do, like currently I work as a teacher, and uh, this job allows me to eat, which is great, pretty nice. Like the pay is all right considering the amount of work I do, and it gives me enough time on this side to actually make games. And uh, honestly, I think I've reached a pretty stable situation now like uh, uh, maybe if uh, like one of my games gets uh, hugely successful maybe I can consider stopping being a teacher and like get a Kickstarter or funding to make a, a bigger game but uh, I what would you want to though would you like, want to? It, it, it really depends like currently no but if ever I do get a successful title and uh, like it becomes a reason, or maybe not even a successful title, but if I get, for instance, enough people, because I have a Patreon, which earns me nothing for now, but if I get enough people on Patreon that I wouldn't need a job to survive, uh, then I would definitely go full-time into making games. Uh, however, I wouldn't see myself working for a game company. That's not how I would do things. No. No, you 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 want to be kind of your, either your own studio or you yeah. want to be or you want to be if you are working with people. And even people, if I make my own studio, it will probably be like th three people tops. Like yeah, you, you want a small group of people you can trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I totally get that. Okay. That's or funny. alternatively, there's another because I've actually tried a few like uh, group projects which works well. Alternatively, I can uh, what I like doing is exploiting uh, like free workforce. Like uh, uh, sometimes I make games with my Discord server. Uh, there's one I made where uh, I asked everyone to send me assets like art, and I made a, a small RPG out of it. Uh, it was quite fun. Uh, like maybe having random unpaid people to send me stuff. That works well too. Charity cells. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. So, six, so how? So how? So how long on average does it take you to make a game? Usually, I I spend between two days and a full week on a game. That's okay. mostly how long it takes. Uh, there are a few projects which took me, like for instance, there's one one of my games uh, called Prep School Horrors. Which is a uh, some people call it an Undertale clone, but it's basically a, a bullet hell RPG. Uh, this game took me something like four months to make, but over those four months, I maybe worked uh, something like twenty days on the entire thing during four months. So yeah, I usually like short development uh, loops. Okay, so so. To make a game, how long how long does it take for you to release the game? You just already once you're done, you just release them. Yeah, when I'm done, I just release it. And usually, what I do is I I try to get people to stream the game so I can watch them play. And if I see them do something like stupid or something that I hadn't attempted, then I just uh, add like a, a hot fix later with everything I noticed, and uh, I have like a, what what I call the 1.1 version with uh, okay. most bugs fixed. Okay. So. So do you have your next release get like I'm, I'm coming to the point I think we're, we're I think we have a decent interview here I think I could be wrong but I think we have a decent one yeah um but basically I'm getting to the point it's like well you got some games coming up and that you want people to play I figure if you're releasing anything this would be a great time to talk about that if <laughs> you got anything that just came out then this would be a great time to talk about those things too yeah uh well I currently have nothing I'm working on I'm basically waiting for a game jams there's a tri jam coming out soon where the goal is like you have three hours to make a game and then another three hours to make anything else so I'll probably be making for this something with that and also gm forty eight which is a a competition where you have forty eight hours to make a game with game maker which is by the way I make everything in game maker uh but from which the th stuff I released recently what I would recommend. Uh, there, there are a few. Uh, mostly uh, Universal Thief, which is probably one of my best projects uh, on this site for now. Uh, there's also, like any projects I made in Colab is good. So there's Holy Plague, uh, where you're, you play as an angel, uh, and uh, you have to sort humanity's uh, issues with God. Um, there's, a, there's a COVID game I made too called uh, uh, Lockdown Opportunities, where uh, you, you're a, a compulsive buyer during a lockdown and you just keep buying new stuff every day and you need, like it's a puzzle game where you need to manage your apartment. Uh, and uh, Prep School Horrors, which is probably one of my games which has the best uh, ambiences. Okay. Like... Uh, 
the best. Uh, it's uh, also it has good music. Nice, nice. All right, so and also if you hate yourself, I recommend Nintendo Nightmare. I recommend uh, The Sky is Lava, which is a really bad game with horrible controls. And you you seem to be a fan of RPGs. Then I really recommend you play Endless Adventuring. Uh, have you played Final Fantasy 2? Uh, as in 2 as in the original 2 or 2 yes. as in 4? Final Fantasy 2. Yes. Uh, okay. I took all the worst elements of this game and made like an action RPG out of it. Oh god. So I basically so for instance the mechanic where uh, the more beaten up you get the more your defense rises that's in my game. And it's it's imbalanced you need to grind to get to the end it's amazing. It's called endless adventuring. It's a, a very bad well, RPG. Not that much is the question. That's the only uh, I th I think you'll like it. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, maybe maybe. Mm. So what you should do, do you have like a um a store or a spot where all you have my page. page. Yeah. So why don't you tell people about your page? Record it right. Tell people about your page. Tell people can find you. And we'll wrap this up because I, I think. Yeah. Mostly you can find me uh, on, on Twitter. Uh, like, this is where I post most of my content. So, uh, Adrian Dittrich. Uh, you probably see my main name spelled somewhere. Uh, and also, my itch page is where I put most of my projects. So, adrianditrick.itch.io this is uh this is the page with most of my games on there and also it also has like uh unfinished prototypes on there so you know proceed with caution uh my game roll page on the other hand usually i only put my finished games on there although there are a few exceptions i i i i'm just on your twitter right now the the, yeah. the um an old gm6 ai competitive engine is Frightening to yeah. watch. Actually. That's <laughs> frightening to actually watch. Um, it's like holy crap. But I mean, you you definitely have. Um, oh my god, I love that you have your like. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's got like this bad game, like this bad game thing pinned on his wall. It's amazing. yes, it's amazing. I made a, a game called community where people can just go and add their really bad games because I I like bad games. I, I like the short indie games. So I like flash games too. Uh, yeah. Red flash. And uh, yeah, that's uh, if you go on my Twitter, mostly I'll tweet either about my short projects or about bad games. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll, I'll wrap this up. I'll wrap up our conversation. I'll talk about a really fun bad story. So I'm a comic book collector too. I had a buddy. He told me, okay, listen, listen, I, I don't want good comics. I want terrible comics. Yes. Right. And, and he doesn't say, like, he just, he loves bad comics. But he like black games. There's something about a bad comic that just hurts. Like just hurts you like right here because yes. you're right i feel that there is a little bit there's that odd little like masochistic yeah pleasure in definitely that, right and that's kind of what i feel like you enjoy that yes but i, I like pain that let the world know that i like pain okay yeah, that's right adrian loves pain mm. but I'm gonna ask I also, you. as a game dev, I also like inflicting pain on others. You know, I like both aspects of this kind of relationship. So if you are working at a studio, Atlas hired this man. The Atlas yeah. model was game and tools <laughs> are, are real. They, they exactly. do that. So there is that. But that does lead to one final question I think I want to ask. Do you learn from every bad game you play? Uh, there, sorry, can you say that Do you learn from every bad game that you play? Yes, definitely, yes. Yeah. And every every game, not not just every bad game. It's just that I happen to play more bad games than good ones. But yes, I I kind of learn from every game I play. Yeah. Yeah. Or from every game I watch uh, YouTube videos of, because I don't play all of them. Fair enough. Well, Adrian, I think you're a pretty cool dude. It was fun. I I, I enjoyed I enjoyed this, even though it's like some of your games like. Mario and oh, like, like that just hurts my soul. Just a play little. it, play it. It will be yeah. fun. <laughs> so if I if I do Nintendo Nightmare, ladies and gentlemen, if I do it on my stream, I will let Adrian mm. know and just my tears. Yeah, so I, I can actually show up. Like I can be online and uh, watch yeah, you yeah, play. Yeah, if you want. yeah. I can yeah. through this atrocity. <laughs> right. So if I do an atrocity night on Twitch, play mm. me again. just play Perfect. me. Again. Also, the ADD game. I definitely when you finish it, send it my way for sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Just Josh, and there will be another one later on tonight with Chuck Fennell. I want to thank Adrian very much for coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. Before we wrap up, if 
you guys want to support me, follow my YouTube channel, Josh Pintelaresco, or my Twitch at Just Josh and Podcast. Stay inspired. Keep uh, shining in the dark, and I'll see you guys tonight. Thank <laughs> you.